Hello, and welcome to the Knitting with Cat Hair podcast. My name is Nikki, and I'm coming to you from Sudbury, Ontario, Canada, where I live with my partner, our two daughters, and our five cats. So to all new viewers, welcome, and to returning viewers, welcome back. So first off, I thought I would take some time to um, explain where my love for knitting came from, where it all started. So when I was eight years old, um, my grandmother and my mother taught me how to knit. Um, so I just learned the knit stitch. And so of course they had me making a garter stitch scarf that I don't think honestly that I ever finished. It was this burgundy red color yarn. I can't even remember what it was, if it was real wool. Knowing my mom, it was probably real wool, but I don't know, it may have been acrylic. I just, I can't even recall. Um, but yeah, so I started with that and um, that was at eight. And then I literally never picked up my knitting needles again until I was, I think in my late twenties, I went through a phase where I was determined to make cushions um, for my for my house. So I had bought this bright orange boucle um, yarn that I was, you know, determined to make these cushions for my couch with. And uh, no, I never, never successfully even finished one. Um, but I did do kind of like a, um, what would it be? A Doctor Who scarf. So it was like um, a really long scarf that was all multicolored. And I, um, at that time, uh, I wasn't into Ravelry or anything yet. I don't think it had even been invented. Um, so I was just, you know, teaching myself. So I knew how to knit and I knew how to purl. But the one thing I did not know how to do was end a different color. So, and start a new color. So I had this big giant scarf that was um, rainbow colors. So it was like red, yellow, I think green and blue. And um, every time I switched colors, I would just, you know, cut the yarn and leave an end. And I didn't know anything about weaving in ends or anything like this. I was just totally winging it. So in the end, what I ended up doing was I took all of the, um, the ends at the sides of the scarf and just braided them into a bunch of braids all the way down. It looked ridiculous. Um, but I, I sported that, <laughs> that thing proudly. I wore that for years. Um, yeah, so that was kind of my first finished project, I would say. Yeah. So then I, you know, knitting fell to the wayside and um, I basically didn't start knitting again until really seriously until after my daughter was born. And that's when I, you know, right before that I had discovered Ravelry. Um, you know, I just, it opened my eyes to so many new things. And um, yeah, I haven't really looked back since. So I'd say I've been seriously knitting for about mm, 10 years now. Yeah, probably about 10 years. So that's, yeah, that's how I got started. And now, um, you know, my mom and I, we knit together too. And um, we kind of feed off each other. <laughs> I think we get each other. We're, we're enablers, let's say. Um, yeah, if we see a new pattern or you know, a real nice yarn or whatever, we kind of uh, enable each other, feed off of each other. So that's fun. Um, yeah, so, and then that's pretty much the history of how I got into knitting and where I'm at. Um, yeah, so, oh, I forgot to mention where you guys can find me. Uh, so yeah, you can find me on Instagram as Knitting with Cat Hair. You can find me on Ravelry as Cat Hair Knitting. And I have created a Ravelry group um, so feel, feel, feel free to join. It's called, um, knitting with cat hair podcast group. So you can just Google it on Ravelry and you can also reach me by emailing me at knitting with cat hair at outlook.com. So, um, today I am not wearing any hand knits, sadly. Um, so we're just going to move right on into finished objects. And I think I mentioned, yeah last podcast that I was working on my very first pair of afterthought heel socks. I finished them. So they look a little wonky on the on the sock blockers because truth be told, I've been wearing them a lot. Uh, yeah, so 
the just to refresh everyone's memory the colorways are and so the yarn is by timber yarns and the colorways are autumn breeze for the stripey bits and the uh heels toes and cuffs are done in a color called caribbean um yeah i i love these socks um the one thing i am finding and i don't know if it's just like it's got to be my foot or something i know i have two feet that are slightly different sizes, um, one being slightly smaller. And I find that my, my right foot, which is a smaller foot, that the heel, um, the afterthought heel, doesn't always stay put. So it kind of kind of slides down a bit. Um, but on my left foot, it fits perfectly fine, no issues. So I know I wasn't sure about whether or not the afterthought heel socks would work for me. Um, and I don't know if it's a matter of just literally making a little bit smaller right sock for myself. I don't know. But um, if I, you know, if I had to choose between the two, the heel, heel flapping gusset socks definitely fit the best. Um, so I'll probably stick with that method. Yeah. So my one and only finished object. Okay, now we'll move into works in progress. Uh, yeah, so I'm still working on my honey, wool and honey sweater. I was hoping to get to the sleeves over the past two weeks, but unfortunately I didn't get there. So um, I did put it on larger needles though, which is nice. So you can see it a little better. So this is the sweater. And where's my stitch marker? There's my stitch marker. So I did, you know, a couple more inches. I measured it. I only have about another inch to go before I start the ribbing, which I'm super excited about. But yeah, it just seems to be taking so long. Um, and I just wanted to show you guys this stitch marker. Oh, you can see it. Here, I'll hold it up. a little bee. <laughs> Isn't it perfect for my wool and honey sweater? So I actually made that stitch marker myself. Um, I just went to Michael's and picked up a bunch of, um, I don't know what they're called, beads, I guess, and um, some little lobster hook clasps and put them together. Voila! So I made myself a bunch of, uh, sorry, progress keepers, not stitch markers. So that's my wool and honey. Um, it's being knit up in uh, Tannis Fiber Arts. Um, it's a fingering weight, pure wash. So it's a 100% merino superwash um, in the colorway caramel. And I didn't mention it, but the pattern wool and honey is a pattern by Andrea Mowry or um, Drea Renee Knits, she's commonly known, and it's housed in my Jessabelle B bag that I love. <clears throat> okay, so that's my first work in progress. And I did go and um, now, that, now that the sun is starting to shine here and it's spring feels like it's kind of just around the corner, although we did get a bunch of snow, um, I'm looking out the window right now and it's, I can see melting off our roof. So that's promising. Um, so it's starting to kind of get me into the summery mood. So I went back to one of my hibernating summer knits and, um, I'm going to pull it out and start knitting on it again. So the name of this pattern is called the mill suite. And it's a pattern by Sandy Rosner. Sorry. So it's, I don't know if you can tell, but it's a sleeveless kind of tank top. Um, has a bit of patterning along the, uh, the neckline. And then the body is simply um, just kind of uh, columns of stockinette with seed stitch in between gives it this really cute cute look 
I love this shirt. So my mom and I actually cast on together. Oh goodness, was it last year? I think it was last year. Yeah, it was last year. And um, she was doing hers in purple and she finished hers. <laughs> I did not finish mine and it looks great on her. So <laughs> I'm kind of excited to get this done for summer. It'll be nice, nice to wear. Oh, and the yarn is um, Sweet Georgia. Sweet Georgia Flax and Silk Fine. So that's the tag. And my colorway that I'm using is called Summer Skin. So this, um, this is actually, yeah, it's linen and silk. So I'm just trying to find the percentages. Oh, 65% silk, 35% linen. And it's so soft. It feels so nice. And it's going to be so great for summer. So breathable, right? So yeah, I'm excited to get that done. And that's housed in my brand new bag, which I really love because I love dandelions. Um, and this was actually really affordable. I got it at Michael's. I think it was like $17 maybe. Um, yeah, good deal. And the thing about this bag is it has, um, I guess it's meant for stranded knitting perhaps, but it's got, if you can see these little holes and you can um, put your yarn through it and then your yarns don't get tangled up. But I was thinking about it and I mean, you'd obviously have to start threading it through right from the beginning of a project. And then afterwards, if you were to try and put your project into your bag, you're gonna have this string that's constantly folded up the side. And in a house full of five cats, I just I don't think that would work. Too inviting. Yeah, but anyways, I like the print though. I think it still functions as a regular bag too, so. Okay, and then my last work in progress for today is housed in my elephant bag by Longview Creations. And it's my new cast on. So since I finished my afterthought heel socks, I decided I would start making another pair of socks for my partner. And if in case you don't know, his favorite color is green. <laughs> so yeah, I'm just doing, um, I think I cast on 72 stitches and I'm just doing a, a, a three by one rib. Yeah, I'm gonna do that all the way down. Um, and it is a self-striping yarn. So the yarn is by Canon Hand Dyes. They're, um, I think they're based out of Oregon. Definitely out of the state somewhere. I joined um, a club a few years back and uh, this was one of the colorways. It was a Peter Pan club. And um, this is a Peter Pan colorway. So it comes with, they're called polar opposites. So you get, this is the one I'm knitting with right now. This is the cake. So it has this like thick light stripes and then thin dark stripes. And then the next sock is going to be made out of this, which is kind of the opposite. So the thick stripes will be the dark green and the lights, uh, the light green will be the thin stripes. So the socks are not going to be matchy matchy. They'll be the same colors, but they won't be the same pattern, I guess, essentially. But I ran it by my partner and he's okay with it. So and you also do get um, a mini skein for the heels, toes, and cuffs, but I'm thinking, so these are the three colors. I'm thinking I'm gonna hold off on the brown. I'm just gonna keep it green. I have enough yarn to do, um, to do the heels and toes and cuffs in just the, the green, so I'm gonna stick with that. And um, what did I wanna say? Okay, so the, the yarn, this is the label here, Canon Hand Dyes, Peter Pan. Um, it is called their Bruce Yak Merino, and it's 70% Southwest Merino, 20% Yak, 10% Nylon. Um, and it's so soft. And I've heard that Yak fur is actually, or Yak, yeah, fur, Yak wool, I don't know, 
Anyways, I've heard that it's really, um, it's really warm. So these will be great for, for winter. I try to have socks on my needles at all times. <laughs> and yeah, I'll be doing a heel flapping gusset for those because those seem to fit my partner very well. Okay, and I think that's it for my works in progress. So I know last episode I had mentioned that I was um, going to cast on the Felix pullover ASAP. And um, that didn't quite happen. <laughs> and there's a reason for that. So moving on into um, acquisitions. My last podcast I also mentioned um, the dress by Gudrun Johnston called the Brassé dress and that it the, the pattern was actually out of print and it was only found in a book called Fair Isle Style. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> so this is the book. I ordered it from Amazon. Um, it was quite affordable actually and it like literally looks like it's brand new even though it's used. Um, yeah, so it's got, it says 20 fresh designs for a classic technique. So they're all Fair Isle. And it's got quite the range, like it's got gloves. Um, you know, it's got, it's got accessories, it's even some socks. And this cute skirt. It's got little cats on it. I thought it was kind of cute. But of course, the one that I want to make is this dress here. I just think it's so cute. So yeah, I held off casting on the uh, Felix pullover and I'm thinking I'll probably, um, I don't know, maybe I'll do both. I really need to get the wool and honey sweater done first. I feel like I, I'm, I'm getting to that point where I used to be the type who just like cast on a whole bunch of projects and didn't bother me at all. And now I'm starting to actually um, find that I really want to finish things because I want to wear them. I'm not like I still enjoy process knitting, but I'm so much more product knitter now. I find like, yeah, I just I just want to be able to wear it. So after I after I finish the wool and honey sweater, then I'll make a decision on on which I'm going to cast on. And I do have to still order the the yarn for um, the brassé dress, and it's it the pattern calls for Brooklyn tweed. Um, I think it was loft. I'm just gonna double check that. Yeah, loft. Yeah, that's their fingering weight. Sorry, I've never used Brooklyn tweed before, so. It's new to me, but I've heard such good things about it. So I'm excited to do that. Um, but I have to save up a bit of money because it's not it's not the cheapest yarn. So I think that'll have to wait a little bit anyways. It'll take me time to finish my other sweater. So that's one acquisition. And I'll just grab the yarn here. So I went to Michael's, like I said, to get things to make, uh, to get the materials to make just um, some... Uh, progress keepers and while I was there I noticed that they were having a sale on their wool yarns and they don't have all that many at least the one here so I kind of got excited and I bought a bunch <laughs> so it's all sock yarn it's called um, Snuggly Stripes Wool and it's by Loops and Threads um yeah so that's the label there and it is a 75 percent wool 25 percent nylon standard sock um but yeah of course these will probably be for my partner because they're green and then i got a bunch of bright colors for myself as well or for whoever my mom might might get some of these <laughs> She likes to make socks. In fact, she's designing her own sock patterns right now. They're very cool. Hopefully um, she'll make an appearance one day on the podcast and you can see them for yourself. And so while I was at Michael's, I also picked up 
two skeins of washable wool blurred lines. So these are also by Loops and Threads, and they are, um, instead of being stripey, they're more of like a, an ombre, I guess you would call them. So what I was thinking is I was going to make another pair of spring socks with them. So um, basically what you do is you just, it's a, it's a striped pair of socks, stockinette, that you just literally start um, with, you can use one ball of yarn and start from both ends and just, um, you know, knit four rows and then switch to the other end of the yarn and knit four rows. And you just keep alternating and it creates this really cool stripey pattern that has the same colors in it, but it, it changes. I don't know how to explain it. They're really cute. I'll, I'll pop a picture in here. So yeah, I thought I could make uh, another pair of those because I wear mine all the time. Mine were made out of Noro, but this is nice. And again, I think, oh, these are, um, yeah, they're 75% washable wool, 25% nylon. Perfect for socks. And I also grabbed, um, while I was at Michael's, I grabbed just two skeins of cotton, 100% cotton, because I was going to make my daughter um, a washcloth or two. Um, just for the bath. And I mentioned that I grabbed a bunch of supplies for stitch markers or progress keepers. And so these are some of the progress keepers I created. They're having a sale on these beads. These are just the little, uh, little turquoise progress keeper. Just the butterfly. Yeah, so super simple. You know, all this time I've been ordering them online, but you can just make your own. Much more cost effective. <laughs> all right, I think that is it for acquisitions. And I'm just gonna throw these away in here. And I also, the other day, I haven't cross-stitched in quite some time. I used to be, before I started knitting, I was a big, big cross-stitcher. And I hadn't done it in a while. And I don't know what inspired me. Oh, Instagram. I've been following um, um, Mad Martina Weber, Chatelaine Designs. Anyways, on Instagram, and I've been seeing all these beautiful, um, beautiful cross stitches, and it really inspired me to pick mine up again and um, and put some stitches in. So, show you what I've been working on. That's kind of embarrassing because this was actually started two thousand and eight. <laughs> <laughs> maybe sooner or later yeah no it was definitely at least 2008 possibly longer ago and um it is from my mom it's not a surprise she's seen it before uh, but this is it here maybe i'll stand back so you can see it so it's called alhambra garden mandala and again, it's by Martina Weber, Weber, um, Chatelaine Designs. And it's just so colorful and so pretty. Um, but yeah, it's a mixture of, you know, regular, if you're, if you're a cross-stitcher, you would know, but DMC thread and um, some specialty silk threads. So I think in the peacock area here, you can see, oh, it's a little blurry, but it's, yeah, there's a bunch of silk threads in there and beads and the whole center is beaded. Oh, it's gorgeous. I love it. And I really, I, I want to get it done for my mom. She's been waiting for a really long time for this. So I'm going to try and put some more stitches into it um, over the next little while. Okay, and 
Um, I think that's about it for today. I already talked about the future cast on, so what I was looking forward to casting on. Um, I still, oh, I was gonna show you, since I've mentioned it numerous times, I, just because I've mentioned it, I was gonna show you that Urso Yarn Co color, <laughs> the latte that I had uh, purchased that doesn't work well with my face. <laughs> so this is the color. Latte. This is the mohair here, and this is the um, the regular yarn, and yeah, it's just it's this color too too washed out, eh? So yeah, I still have to find something to use it in again. I think I'm I think I'm leaning towards a uh, some kind of a shawl, and while I have it out, I'll show you that other color I was mentioning, the licorn, the one of a kind. <laughs> that I snapped up when it was in like a bunch of other people's baskets. This is the color here. That was just so pretty. And it's a real, um, what do you say, toothy yarn, <laughs> sheepy yarn. It's, it's rustic. It's rustic, but it's, it's so lovely at the same time. And I bought some, um, Nitpix was having a sale on their Aloft. So I bought this color to go with it. Which I think will look really pretty. Once I figure out what I'm going to use it for. I, I'm still thinking I might make that... Um, oh goodness, that hat that I was eyeing before. Yeah, I'm thinking a hat will do would do well, but now that things are starting to warm up outside, I'm just not in the mood to make any hats because I just don't think I'm gonna get a chance to wear them. So maybe next winter or fall. Yeah, so I just thought I'd show you that. And I do, I have ordered a few other things, um, but I think I'll mention those on the next podcast when they hopefully they'll have arrived by then in two weeks. So yeah, I think that's about it. Um, so yeah, if you enjoyed the podcast, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, as I mentioned on the previous podcast, if, if and when we reach 100 subscribers, I'm gonna be doing a giveaway. Um, I'm sure it'll be of the yarny type. And so yeah, make sure to subscribe. And um, yeah, I'll talk to you in two weeks. All right, bye.